How's it going, everybody? Landon with the Truck Boss Show. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Next to the awesome Isela. Hola, muchachos. ¿Qué tal? Isela, we have a pretty awesome show lined up, don't we? We do. Hey, but before we get into these two segments that we want to bring to you today, last week on the show, we brought to you fuel prices and load rates. Really wanted to bring the latest information so that you can run your business better. But you came across a video on Facebook with what's happening down in Mexico that could yes. impact fuel prices as well. That's right, Landon. Let me tell you that I came across a video, um, Irlanda Sanchez. And of course the video is in Spanish, just so you know, but she basically gives her personal opinion on the whole situation. Now what's going on down there, of course, they have a fuel shortage. It's not because they don't have it at all. There's been a lot of people that have been stealing. And of course that's been a big deal. I mean, it's, it's a huge deal across Mexico, the whole entire state. Now she gives her opinion, why? Because of course, Yes, there's a lot of people that go through struggles, ups and downs. It doesn't mean you have to steal, especially when it comes to fuel. Fuel is a big, important thing um, for our vehicles and for her. Why? Because she's also a truck driver. Truck drivers are, is what moves this country. All over the world, we have what we have because of them. And I know that it's hard for them for the simple fact that they also need fuel so they can deliver the products that they have. You can check out the video on our Facebook page. Landon, I think this is a big topic, especially when mm -hmm. it comes to our drivers. Um, fuel is very important. Absolutely. I mean, we're a world economy. What happens all over the world affects it fuel affects. prices. And so this was a really interesting video. I'm glad you found it. I'm glad we're bringing it to the Truck Boss Show viewership. So check it out in the comment threads or like you said, our Facebook fan page, Truck Boss Show. Uh, you can search that, find the article there because you posted it, which is pretty good stuff. Yes, I did. It's really awesome. I think it's interesting, um, you know, just like here in America, down in Mexico, truck drivers it's a big make deal. it happen. There's yes, a lot of business that goes back and, and forth. And of course, every the fuel day. is a lot more expensive down there than it is here. It is, it is. So check out that video. You're going to really enjoy it. Switching gears. Let's switch it up. We're switching gears to some very important topics today. We are. Uh, we always like to bring entertainment. We always like to bring uh, some fun stuff to talk about. But when it comes to running your business and staying compliant and also having the protection that you need, we've got a couple segments that you're really going to enjoy. And this first one is with my friend. David Saunders, he's president of Workforce QA. He's also a CSA expert, and he serves on the CSA Task Force Committee. And I had the privilege of sitting down with him to talk about the original intent behind CSA 2010 when it launched several years ago, and where it is today and what you can expect in 2019. So check out this video. Why CSA 2010 even launched? What was the original intent? So prior to CSA, it was called Safe Assist. Safe Assist is still there basically, but it was really not a grading system, it just counted out of services. Uh, it would rate the amount of out of services that your, your company was in or and rated against the, compared against the industry. Right. CSA's initiative was to actually drill down at the deficiencies of the carrier and the driver. For instance, no driver files ever caused a fatality. The paper doesn't jump out of a desk and go get you. So you have to get to the roadside. And the roadside has to do with grading the, the condition of the vehicle and the fitness of the driver. That's really what CSA is designed for and then tag certain basics on that. Where it went away was they did not have a good mythology rate to say, I'll grade you here, I'll grade you there. You cannot manage what you cannot measure. So the intent of CSA 2010, I bought into 100%. We had a, and we still have a safe test, uh, sorry, a CSA task force committee mm -hmm. and each of us are given uh, an assignment to drill in on each basic and what that means to help feed that back to FMCSA in an open comment period or just through channels of communication. From a headline perspective into the you know major publications around the trucking industry you're not seeing what you used to see with CSA but off air you were telling me that there is a lot in the works yes. uh, that we need to pay attention. Talk briefly about what it, uh, an owner-operator, independent, or a small carrier needs to be prepared for coming in 2019. I would say that time builds against you, meaning that just because you may not have had an on-site or an off-site uh, audit conducted on you by FMCSA based on your current points on CSA, that that's not going to be grandfathered or wiped out. The NAS studies only uh, exposed FMCSA to the way that they had a mythology rate of grading your vehicle and grading those uh, points that, that did not fall within the guidelines of compliance. So it's inherently dangerous for any owner-operator or any fleet to say, well, 
NSA studies coming out, CSA is kind of suspended. I don't read about it much in transport topics. Must not be much happening on, no, 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 no. Keep an eye on the fact that you're still getting inspected. You're still getting some warnings. Mm -hmm. And those do not go away. They're archived in a point system. Right. And so whatever the outcome of the NSA study is, however FMCSA revises CSA, it's still gonna drag all that data with you. Right. And you were saying real quickly that, there, I mean, there's a, it's evolving. CSA, um, let's call it CSA 2019, CSA 2020, right. is going to look much different. Yes. Correct? Yes. Can you share one or two points of what's going to look a lot different? The grading system okay. of what actually is considered a, a crash risk factor. Let crash me put it risk that way. factor, yes. It says, I, uh, again, if you're, if you've got a problem with uh, mud flaps, that's not going to cause a collision. Uh, your side skirting system on trailers, mm -hmm. that's to uh, every uh, good intention there is to increase fuel mileage. Mm -hmm. But eventually that skirt is going to come loose. That's mm -hmm. another inspection item. Uh, they're having to add that into part of the, the inspection criteria for, for maintenance. Uh, also, what's going to change not only uh, on the uh, from the grading standpoint, but it's how audits are conducted. Right. Uh, because they, let's face it, they can't audit every single trucking company. So I believe <clears throat> because of the technology, they're still going to, even though the courts out, uh, threw out the safety fitness termination rule, they really just suspended it and told FMCSA go back and come up with a, bit, a better model. Right. But again, I think what's gonna come out of the NSA studies is that the CSA model will have to eventually drill down to how do I take a bad actor out of business. Gotcha, gotcha. That's a very important to know. Yes. Um, David, thank you so much for the awesome insight with CSA. Guys, we'll see you on the next segment here at the Truck Boss Show. So I hope you found some useful information when it came to CSA and getting prepared in 2019. Stay in compliance, a big topic when it comes to running your business. Taylor, we both obviously really have a lot of respect for David. We do. Enjoyed our time with him, but it's time to shift gears a little bit and talk about the legal side of CSA, not just the compliance. That's right, Landon. We had a great conversation with our friend Tina with TVC Pro Driver, talking about the legal side of CSA and how to protect your CDL. Check this video out. You don't want to miss out. How's it going, everybody? Landon with the Truck Boss Show. Excited to be here at TVC Pro Driver next to Tina. Tina, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You guys are located right here in Oklahoma City. Uh, before we jump into the legal side of CSA, we've got some important questions that we're going to discuss, which I'm really pumped about. Uh, when we just talked about the compliance side of CSA and the enforcement side. So I can't thank you enough for diving into this with us and, and sharing a different perspective of what owner operators and independents and drivers out there I need to know when it comes to protecting their CDL and more. So a big thank you. Um, before we do that, though, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been a part of TV, TVC Pro Driver? I've been a part of TVC for 18 years. That's a long time. It's been a wonderful 18 years. Um, and I started in the call center. Um, I worked in the attorney relations department. And now I oversee the day-to-day -day operations in the legal department. So you're the director of legal services here at TVC. That's correct, yes. That's awesome. So you, you definitely understand what we're about to talk about uh, in a big way. I like uh, to think so, yes. Well, we're going to find out, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but, and again, being a part of TVC Pro Driver, for those who don't know that are watching, why don't you share a little bit about uh, what your firm does? We are a motor club, um, okay. and we provide services for commercial truck drivers. Um, our goal is to lower the impact on our CDL. Mm -hmm. Anytime a driver has a legal issue, our job is to be there to provide them an attorney to take care of that for them. That's know, awesome. Keep them out on the road. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep the truck moving Absolutely. and protect uh -huh. their CDL and more importantly, protect their, uh, their career. Yes. Um, so they can continue to provide for the family and more. Yeah. Uh, so we, we're shifting gears a little bit when it comes to the legal side of CSA. So I've got a few questions here. Look forward to your feedback. So let's dive right into it. All right, it. let's go. Um, the first question, when it comes to your perspective and your experience, do you feel that CSA, the, the CSA initiative, has been a benefit to the industry? It's yes, a big question. I do. It is a big, I'm question. Sorry, it's a big question. And I know some people are not fans, um, but I do believe it has improved highway safety. Um, some perks to this is um, it allows the carriers to 
um, evaluate the drivers, you know, prior to hiring them. Mm -hmm. So it gives them that exposure. Also, same for the drivers. They right. get to look into how the carriers operate and they can choose their prospective employer. That's so. a really good point. Um, there are many that have never been to the FMCSA website mm -hmm. uh, or the CSA website when it comes to the SMS score and et cetera. Um, where can they go online to be able to see if they're considering a new position at another carrier, where can they find that information out? Well, they can go to the safety measurement system. You okay. can put in the DOT number or you can do a search by the company's name and um, it will give you the information, um, how many vehicles, how many mm. inspections they've had. Um, it gives you a full report just online. It's yeah. really easy to check it out. The carrier, it's also about the driver. Absolutely. Um, next question, when it comes to specific areas that could Im be improved with CSA, do you feel that there's areas that uh, need to change or be reformed in any way? I do. Um, I believe, you know, when a driver has a warning on an inspection, it is almost impossible to challenge. I mean, they've mm -hmm. made it very difficult to do. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's unfair. Also, there's a lot of inconsistencies. You, you know, you have some troopers when they review data queue challenges um, that they follow the adjudication policy mm -hmm. and it's a quick process while you have others, you almost have to go through an appeal process. Right. L let's dive a little bit deeper and that kind of leads into the next question. Um, data cues, when it comes to challenging the violations that a driver might receive during a roadside inspection, what is a data cue? What's the process? And if you don't mind, what's the success rate from your perspective? Well, data cue is basically like an electronic means to um, challenge anything that you feel is unfair. So if there are, say, violations on an inspection that aren't accurate or if mm -hmm. they're reported multiple times or maybe even you have something on your record that doesn't even belong to your company. I mean, it gives you the ability to go on there and present facts right. showing this is not something that should be there. Got it. Um, and it's a simple process um, for anyone who's pretty savvy on the computer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a step by step you go in, you click here and there, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what category that you're challenging and upload your inspection information and any documentation to support it. And so what happens on the backside? Where does that, that data go? Does it go to the um, Highway Patrol office? Does that go to the state itself and then they farm that out to their well, appropriate district? Well, it is district? assigned to a state trooper okay. to review the information. Um, it typically takes anywhere from same day to two weeks for them to respond. Right. Um, but you do have to present documentation to support your defense. And again, you know, you may go back and forth a few times, but it's a pretty quick process. Um, if, what's the benefit? And this kind of you know, leads to our last question here. What's the benefit of choosing uh, a motor club like TBC or those out there, you know, uh, other companies, mm -hmm. versus I just go and hire a local attorney? Well, again, we do our research. Mm -hmm. um, we're able to track their outcomes. So we base our volume on who we're going to use for our from our network based on the outcomes that we've received. Right. So we have attorneys we've worked with for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. We know their abilities. Um, they have good relationships with the judges. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're just, we use experienced attorneys right. that we can trust and have a good rapport with. Are there price, you know, price advantages? Yes, definitely. So based on volume, you're able to negotiate a favorable um, retainer fee. So TVC, um, obviously we don't, TVC pays for the legal representation. Right. If you don't have a company like that, then you have to pay the full retainer fee, which can be mm -hmm. costly when mm -hmm. you already have a ticket that you're having to take care of. Absolutely. Career. Absolutely. That's good. Well, Tina, thank you so much for your time. Thank yeah, you. I can't thank uh, um, TVC Pro Driver and all your team here enough. Uh, you guys have been such great hosts with the Truck Boss Show here. And so, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this segment. We'll see you next time. Thank you. A big thanks to Tina with TVC Pro Driver. Landon, what do you think? That was awesome information. I mean, it's so important to have the right information. If you get that ticket or too many violations, uh, not only to protect your CDL, but more importantly, to protect, protect your career, yes. your family. My goodness, I mean, to be able to provide um, just a big thank you to TVC Pro Driver, as well as to David when it came to the compliance side of CSA. Very knowledgeable. Just an awesome show. Big shout out to them. And But we've got an awesome show coming up, coming up next week. We do. We actually got a chance to visit with our friend Tony. He's a great person. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we're going get to get to get to know a little bit more about Tony this time around. We're switching it up with him. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Behind the scenes story of how he launched his company, how he's be able to get past the first year, be more successful. Uh, incredible stuff. And on top of that, we're going back to our friends at Rush Truck Center to be able to talk about the pre-trip inspection. You don't want to miss it. It's inside directly from their lead mechanic, stuff that you can apply to your business. So an awesome show coming up next yes, week. Yes, we do. A lot of good stuff 2019. That's right. That's right. And something big here at the Truck Boss Show, we switched. Maybe you've seen, seen this, but we've switched our social platforms. We just launched our brand new Facebook fan page, the Truck Boss Show. Uh, excuse me, just search Truck Boss Show as well as our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel, Truck Boss Show. So search for both of those. Subscribe, become a fan. We want you to follow. Uh, we've got a lot of fans on the other side, you know, we over 20,000 followers right now. Uh, and so we're transitioning over there for specific reasons. And so you definitely want to get connected and stay tuned to all the content we have coming your way. Uh, it's just great stuff. I'm really pumped about it. We do. We're going to have a lot of good stuff. Like I said, 2019 is going to be very interesting and it's going to be unforgettable. That's right. As always, a lot of fun. Always. And if you don't know why we do this. Because you're the boss.